Well, it's about bloody time this damn movie came out. Hi, I'm Danny Quinn, and welcome to another episode of First Impressions. On today's episode, I welcome the return of The Incredibles in Pixar's latest animated adventure. This movie picks up immediately after the events of the original, after a battle with the underminer Mr. Incredible, voiced by Craig T. Nelson, Elastigirl, voiced by Holly Hunter, and Frozone, voiced by Samuel L. Jackson, are approached by the wealthy Winston Dever, voiced by Bob Odenkirk, who wants to help them restore the tarnished reputation of supers with Elastigirl as the face of the campaign, who heads out to fight crime and defeat the treacherous new villain on the block, the Screen Slaver. All while Mr. Incredible is left to raise the children, including daughter Violet, voiced by Sarah Vowell, son Dash, voiced by Huck Milner, and the seemingly powerless youngest son, Jack-Jack, who's just emerged with superpowers of his own. It's been 14 years since the release of Pixar's The Incredibles. During a time where Disney was really on the ropes and Pixar's star was really about to take off, it helped to cement Pixar's reputation as one of Disney's biggest assets, and for good reason. But as much as I do enjoy Pixar's films, for some reason, I always feel like The Incredibles is one of those movies I like more now that I'm a little bit older than I did back when I was a kid. I liked it back when I was a kid, I enjoyed the characters and action and humour and everything, but now that I'm a little bit more mature, I find myself appreciating the characters, the story, the themes and the filmmaking a lot more than I did back then. It's a much darker and more mature outing for Pixar, and certainly more mature than some of their subsequent outings, but it can still be enjoyed as a fun superhero film for the whole family. So with that in mind, I was definitely looking forward to the Sequel, especially since it's taken about 14 years for it to come out. Since then, the superhero genre has really begun to take off the rise of the MCU, and Brad Bird has since went on to prove himself as a very capable live action director with Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. And the hype for this movie is just insane. I think, out of all the sequels that Pixar has done in recent years, this is easily one of the most anticipated, if not the most anticipated. But having just seen it, I can honestly say, for the most part, it's worth the wait. It's a real pleasure to see everybody's favourite superhero family back in action. One thing that's very apparent when watching Incredibles 2 is that on a sheer technical level, the film is a huge step up from its predecessor, which is already very impressive looking for its time in 2004. The animation is absolutely stunning and vibrant, and Bird definitely hasn't lost his touch when it comes to the world building. The architecture and style is just as wonderfully retro as it was in the first film, really capturing that idealistic vision of the future that the 60s promoted um, we never actually got. And Bird once again demonstrates that he has a knack for creating very good action and very entertaining set pieces that not only mix humour and tension in a very effective way, but also manages to show off the super's incredible abilities in very unique and imaginative ways. It's a film that manages to successfully recapture the look and feel of its predecessor, right down to Michael Giacchino's very retro sounding jazzy film score. It's no wonder the two worked so well together on Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, they were so the right people for that film. I like with most Pixar sequels, the film does flip the dynamic from the first movie a little bit, so instead of Mr. Incredible going out and fighting the bad guys, it's mostly Elastigirl who ends up in that role to the point that she's arguably the main character of this movie, while Mr. Incredible takes up the task of looking after the children. It's a nice little role reversal from the first movie, and it's interesting to see these two characters in roles that they're not accustomed to. And it never feels like one plotline dominates the other, they both have equal amounts of focus and screen time in the overall film. That was one of my only real issues with the first movie, it really felt like Mr. Incredible dominated the proceedings, whereas the rest of the family didn't really factor into the movie until its second half. Fortunately, in this film, it feels a lot more balanced out. There's a lot of time devoted to Mr. Incredible and his children as they attempt to deal with everyday life. One of the things I like about the Incredibles in both movies is that although the family are all superheroes and they have special powers, they still feel like actual human beings who have to deal with everyday problems like work, like stress, adolescent crushes, minding children and homework. And that's something that the second movie really doubles down on. It's not quite this big adventure like the first movie, it's slightly more intimate and personal. And that really isn't a bad thing by any means, in fact I quite like the more character driven approach. It reminds me a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and I think both movies work for many of the same reasons. The movie really gets a lot of mileage out of the Parr's family life, especially when it comes to Violet, Dash and Jack-Jack, who really get a lot more time to shine in the sequel. Violet especially gets a lot more focus with their subplot about this boy she a crush on. Jack-Jack also gets a load of screen time as Mr. Incredible tries to deal with his newfound powers, and that's easily one of the main highlights of the film. There's so much humour when it comes to Jack-Jack in this film, in fact, I think the humour in this film is a lot 
funnier than the humour in the first movie. Don't get me wrong, I do like the first movie a lot, and I do think the humour in it is very good, but the humour wasn't really the focus of the first movie, it was a bit more serious in tone, and I can see maybe some people being a little bit taken aback by the slightly lighter tone, but to be honest, I don't mind it that much, especially whenever the film is this fucking funny. And the voice actors once again all do a terrific job. Craig T. Nelson and Holly Hunter step back into the roles of Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl with ease. Sarah Vile is good as Violet, Huck Miller makes for a pretty likeable dash. Samuel L. Jackson is as cool and likeable as ever as Frozone. Brad Bird is still hilarious as Edna Mode. He's only in the movie for one or two scenes, but really makes the most of her brief appearance in the film. Jonathan Banks as Dicker, who takes over from Bud Lucky, who voiced the character in the first film, is appropriately grouchy. Bob Odenkirk is perfectly suited to the role of Winston Dever, to the point that it looks like the character was just written and animated for him. And the same goes for Catherine Keener playing his sister Evelyn, who's very much the brains of the duo. But just like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, the increased focus on characters does mean that the story does kind of take a backseat to the proceedings. And on a couple of occasions, it does kind of feel like a rehash of the first movie, with the roles of Elastigirl and Mr. Credible reversed. And it doesn't exactly help that the main villain, the Screen Slammer, is a bit of a letdown. The character is a pretty cool introduction, and the initial confrontation between him and Elastigirl is genuinely a very creepy and suspenseful sequence. But the direction that they take this character and the big reveal behind the character isn't even remotely surprising. Especially since it's a twist that has popped up quite frequently in Disney movies as of late. And considering how great of a villain Syndrome was in the first movie, I just can't help but feel a little bit let down by Screen Slaver. But aside from that, I don't have too much to complain about. I think it's a very good sequel overall. And before I wrap things up, I do want to talk briefly about the short film that plays before The Incredibles 2, Bow, which is really weird. It's about this mother who makes a dumpling that comes alive and she basically raises it like a child. I know you've probably seen all the memes and images and if you've seen this little movie, you're probably just downright weirded out by it, but I honestly loved it. I thought it was a very wonderfully charming creative little short film. Yeah, it's a little bizarre admittedly, but it's very touching and emotional. It's just quintessential Pixar brilliance and I think it might rank as one of their best short films, period. So yeah, a strong 9 out of 10 for Bow. If you do choose to see Incredibles 2, the short film is like an added bonus, it's a real treat in its own right. Overall, I really enjoyed The Incredibles 2. It's not quite on par with the first movie, but it comes very close. The action is highly entertaining, it's very imaginative and creative, it's very well directed, it's very funny, the characters are great, and while it isn't quite as story driven as the first movie, the focus on characters really does have its benefits. And with that being said, I'm going to give Incredibles 2 a strong 8 out of 10. I do recommend seeing it if you get the chance. If you're a big fan of Pixar and you really like the first movie, I'd recommend giving it a shot. It's not quite on par with the first movie, but it's very close and it's still pretty damn incredible in its own right. So The Incredibles 2, have you seen it yet? If so, what do you think of it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you like about it? What did you not like about it? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you once again for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe to my channel while you're at it, that'd be much appreciated. If there's anything I can do to improve my presentation, do let me know, I'm always happy to hear feedback as long as it's somewhat constructive. And if you want to follow me on social media or support me on Patreon, links below down in the description. And until next time, I'm Danny Quinn, and I hope you have a pleasant evening.